In our previous look at this problem, we've already calculated uh, the lift coefficient for the general aviation aircraft. We've calculated the Mach number and the Reynolds number for the general aviation aircraft. And now we're being asked, um, uh, can we use this Wright Brothers wind tunnel to do a uh, um, test, a scale test, and uh, determine what the lift coefficient, what the drag coefficient uh, would be for this cruise condition. So um, we've been given some information about the Wright Brothers wind tunnel. Um, let's write that down. We've been told the maximum velocity is 200 miles per hour, which is about 293 feet per second. We've also been given the uh, uh, conditions in the test section of the wind tunnel. In particular, we've been told that the uh, wind tunnel is going to be at the atmospheric conditions uh, for the tunnel, where the tunnel is located at. The reason this happens is because the, um, uh, the, the, though the tunnel is, is closed off, it's a closed circuit tunnel, it doesn't exhaust the atmosphere, um, there's, there's no, um, uh, the tunnel opens up and so you can walk right into it, it's not sealed away from the atmosphere in any uh, way so that um, uh, the conditions inside the tunnel uh, at least before you start operating it, are going to be the atmospheric conditions. Uh, we don't do anything like pressurize it uh, or anything like that, so um, when the tunnel starts moving, uh, the conditions in the test section will again be very close to atmospheric conditions, um, except that the velocity now will have been increased. As you run it, the temperature will tend to increase because there's heat transfer uh, that's occurring. Um, and so uh, that will have some impact uh, likely on the temperature and it will depend on how much cooling there is um, in the wind tunnel. Uh, but basically it's a good approximation to think of for this type of wind tunnel that the uh, uh, conditions in the test section are uh, whatever the velocity is supposed to be and uh, the rest is at atmospheric. Um, so we've been given the atmospheric conditions here and I've written them out here. Okay, now um, we can then calculate the maximum Mach number, and that's nothing more than the maximum velocity that the tunnel can achieve, this 200 miles per hour, or 293 feet per second, divided by the speed of sound, um, which is 1.1 times 10 to the 3 feet per second. So if you do that, you'll find out that the Mach number, the maximum Mach number the wind tunnel can achieve is 0 0.27, uh, which is larger than the Mach number at cruise. So we can certainly uh, um, hit the Mach number uh, criteria we could match this. We would not run at Vmax. Uh, we would want to run it a little bit low, slower than Vmax so that we could match the Mach number. Now one thing to note is um, because the Mach number is fairly low here, either even at the maximum Mach number we're below say 0.3, um, we're not expecting the Mach number effects to be that significant here. So um, we could probably say well run at the maximum uh, velocity if we need to. Um, and though the Mach number won't match, it'll be close enough. Um, so that's a possibility. Now let's turn our attention to the Reynolds number and see uh, if we can match the Reynolds number or not. Now to calculate the Reynolds number, we need the reference length. Um, and so we need to determine what the reference length is for our scaled model. And um, we've been told uh, that the span of the model uh, can only be nine feet um, in the wind tunnel. The, the wind tunnel only has a 10 foot wide cross section so um, you, you can't quite go all the way to 10 feet because you'd have uh, interference, strong interference effects with the wall so let's say we go to nine feet. That means then that the model of the wind tunnel is a quarter scale model of the full scale general air aviation aircraft, right? The uh, span of the general aviation aircraft we've been told is 36 feet so We've got a 9 over 36 or a quarter, one quarter scale model. So that means that the cord, which we're using for our reference length, in the tunnel is going to be a quarter of the full scale, which is 5. So uh, um, the cord is uh, 1.25 feet. Okay, now we can use that as our reference length and plug in the uh, um, density and viscosity. Uh, and calculate the Reynolds number in the wind tunnel and the velocity of course. Um, so the maximum Reynolds number that can be achieved in the wind tunnel is then given by uh, uh, is 2.4 times 10 to the 6. 
So if I run it at the top speed of the wind tunnel, I get 2.4 million. I need to get 4.7 million. Okay, so I'm off by about a factor of two. Um, this is not bad. Uh, in many ways, you could probably use the wind tunnel, but technically, uh, we're not going to be able to achieve uh, dynamic similarity here. The Reynolds number will not match, uh, at, even at the maximum velocity. And then if we match the Mach number, in fact, it's going to even be off a little bit more uh, because we're going to have to run that at a lower velocity. So we're going to have a mismatch in the Reynolds number by at least about a factor of two. Um, and so technically we cannot achieve uh, dynamic similarity here. Can't quite achieve it. Um, so that, that could be a problem. Now, uh, you might say uh, this Reynolds number difference is not too bad. It's just about a factor of two. And, and that's true. Um, probably for the lift, it won't matter all that much um, in a cruise condition. Uh, this, this is a tricky Reynolds number regime, though. We'll learn more about this when we talk about boundary layers and, in particular, turbulence uh, transition and turbulence. Um, so this kind of difference in Reynolds number uh, could have an impact, uh, in particular, in the drag. Um, and we'll see, we'll see why later on. Okay, so that's our uh, look at uh, dynamic similarity for this general aviation aircraft and uh, the Wright Brothers wind tunnel.